The main thing I want to cover today are the changes to HummingBot over the past couple of years from an architectural standpoint. And then we'll talk about connectors, interfaces, and, then, and the strategies. The main evolution that HummingBot overall has made, when we started, it was really just a command line client where you could execute a series of very monolithic strategies. And these were V1 strategies. Luckily, it took off because th there was a need in the market for something that was open source. So, so you could you didn't have to depend on some web application because you're actually adding really sensitive private keys here and API keys, but also something that integrated to lots of exchanges and allow you to actually run like an automated process on those exchanges. And because the initial use case was for market making, and I think still is probably the main use case, the strategies we've created were ones like pure market making, where it's basically placing a set of orders and refreshing and orders on exchange, as well as arbitrage, where you could basically buy low on one exchange, sell high on another exchange, and then cross exchange market making, which were basically just a combination of those two. I think the V1 strategies still get used quite a lot, actually. And we do try to make sure that HummingBot every release still works with those V1 strategies. However, we quickly saw, I think starting in probably 2021, that we were getting demands from people to add more components into the strategies. On the other hand, we also saw the need for people to do things like backtesting. To be honest, we probably try to grow too fast in too many directions. Over time, and I think this is a large credit to the community, as well as to my CTO, Fede, managed to make the growth happen without compromising the integrity of the framework. With the help of the community and with the help of AI-based tools, and our team, who is like David and who maintains our documentation. And now I think HummingBot is more of a framework. So it's a framework that helps people deploy bots on any centralized exchange or any decentralized exchange. We maintain this reported volumes dashboard, which is comprised of anonymized activity, centralized exchanges like Binance and Kraken. I'm also excited to see the presence of a new exchanges like Hyperliquid and Backpack. I think it's an indication that DEXs are truly are gaining market share. One of the main things we wanted to highlight is the presence of the new HummingBot API. The API is, we think this is the new backbone of the framework. So now by default, when you run the deploy repo, you're installing this as the backend and then the dashboard as the front end. So when you're using the dashboard, all you're doing is calling the endpoints that exist in the API. When you go to deploy, when you run uh, Docker Compose up D, you can already access the API on the localhost 8000 port. I just ran yeah, this Docker Compose up, up D file. It started the dashboard running on localhost 8501. So the API is running on localhost 8000. It's really just a, a very powerful set of endpoints. So adding credentials, what exchanges are even available, what the trading rules, order types are for the exchanges, the history of your trading portfolio, placing orders, getting your positions, getting your active orders, getting the funding rates, and then of course, deploying bots as well. Configuring a bot via a controller. This is a strategy V2 controller that we use. There's a lot of functionality here. When you use dashboard running on 8501, these will call the endpoints. I just mentioned like adding credentials. To be honest, we're not fully investing in this because it's kind of limiting access to full power of this API. That's why we're focusing on model context protocol, MCP. Now you can really talk, provide instructions to the API and the MCP server will broker that interaction using your, your AI model. Connectors are how we standardize certain types of exchanges, we made a big change to gateway, the abstraction layer that we use for between DEX protocols really trying to make it easy for these integrations to happen by leveraging the fact that they can use the existing SDKs and that they can kind of standardize everything on this side so that for HummingBot, they can just treat gateway connectors as another order book connector. In 2.9, when you connect to gateway, you'll be able to connect to an Ethereum or the Solana blockchain. Ethereum, th this will support any Ethereum based chain. Similar for Solana, once you add your Solana wallet, you'll be able to use it for any Solana-based chain in the future. If you want to get started with Gateway, this installation page has been updated for the new format. Right now, because Gateway is changing all the time, I would actually recommend doing the standalone source approach. After you install Gateway, you should be able to basically just run Gateway Connect 
add your Ethereum or Solana wallet, I highly recommend adding a Helios API key for Solana or an Ethereum API key for Ethereum. In terms of connectors, gateway connectors were probably the big change for this year. Let me move on a bit to user interfaces. Our approach to Hummingbot has always been to try to focus on the back end, in part because front end is probably not what we're great at. We do have this dashboard that we added. But we're finding that it's really hard to keep up with the changes we want to make over on the API side. That's why we decided recently to focus our efforts right now on building out the Hummingbot MCP server. So the MCP server is really an interface between this API and your AI assistant. So the way we've designed our MCP server is that it assumes that you're running this server somewhere, you're running the API somewhere, and now the MCP server will expose a set of tools that help you interact with this API in a cleaner, like easier way. So for example, instead of understanding how to use the get accounts uh, set of routes, you can just say, what's my balance on Binance? The MCP server will know how to call the get account balance tool. The overall idea is that, and I think in my opinion, this is where the market is heading. All of us will have our own AI assistants that we like using. You know, that AI assistant will go with us everywhere we are with like smart glasses in the future. We'll have access to some AI agent that will help us like with stuff. We just updated the, the installation process. Marcos, let me ask you a question. There are a lot of changes from 2.7 to 2.8. Yes, there are. Not sure if the examples are updated use 2.8. They are updated actually. Where can I find documentation on how to use the gateway 2.8 and strategies? This gateway section in the documentation has been completely updated. This is updated for 2.8. And this should also show you, I believe, what strategies and scripts you can run with the new gateway. So for example, I would probably start with these kind of simpler strategies, but I also want to note that one of the big changes to gateway is the ability to execute commands before you automate something. You want to make sure that you can actually use it. I highly recommend starting with commands, adding a token if you need to, and then executing a simple swap. And I want to kind of show everyone how to use and install this new MCP server. Okay. What I need to have is. Python 3.1 running, which I already have. I have the running API server, which I already have as well, running on localhost 8000. Yeah, I'll probably use Claude code here. And I also have Docker desktop. So I have all five of the system prerequisites, and I think I'm ready to go ahead. First, I should open Docker desktop catalog Hummingbot. Add, click the plus icon to install the Hummingbot MCP server. Awesome. Uh, navigate to the configuration tab. So I do have this running. Local 8000. Uh, and then I, I'm using admin. I think admin here as well. I do have it running on Docker. So I think I'm going to need this. We'll save that. Uh, after installing and configuring the MCP server, connect them to MCP clients. Let's try to set up Claude desktop. Okay. And then it does have access to it. That's pretty cool. That was surprisingly easy to set up. We'll make this note a little bit bigger. Most people are probably installing it via Docker. So they'll probably need to put this host Docker internal instead of localhost 8000. There's also instructions and a manually as well. My initial use case for the MCP in Hummingbot is really just exploration, getting data from different exchanges, from different markets. Overall, I highly recommend exploring the MCP server. Now, in terms of strategies, we have added a couple of new strategies. A grid strike is probably the one that I recommend people start with if they're new to a V2 strategy and they just want to run something that is going to generate volume and not lose money. There's also an updated version of pure market making, similar to the initial pure market making. In terms of the using the new gateway DEX middleware, few scripts like a data feed and a LP managed position that help you basically automate some basic things on DEXs, managing a very simple kind of automated LP position where you enter a position when the price reaches a certain level and you close it after a certain level. So yeah, overall, I think that Hummingbot has been a very productive year for us because we've made progress on all four of these fronts and significant progress, despite the fact that there's really only one true developer on the team, which is Fede. I LARP, that's a developer for DEXs. The vast majority of the stuff that's been built has really been done with Fede. But I also think what's enabled us to focus on techno development has been the fact that instead of doing four or five botcamp cohorts a year, 
we're only doing two. And we try to make sure that every, for those two months of the year, we're just focused on teaching the bot camp students. But it really does allow us the other parts of the year to, to focus on just improving the framework and allowing the community to keep on adding to the framework as well. Yeah, I'm just really grateful to the community because it's really a people using HummingBot, people giving us feedback, people building connectors, people adding strategies that has allowed us to be where we are. Yeah, I'm just excited to see it grow. Right. Stuff that HummingBot has and just let us know if it doesn't work. I'm sure there's lots of doesn't work. We're going to try to let the community use a bounty system and try to get the community more involved in fixing the areas that need help. Great. Thanks, everyone. Bye.